Hey guys, I am Game Advisor and welcome to our Icarus leveling guide. Today, we're going to be going over some of the newer ways that you can level in Icarus, what are the most efficient ways currently, and just kind of giving you our opinions on each of them. Now, if you guys are planning on purchasing other survival games like Icarus, for an example, you could go over to Humble Bundle and buy games for a cheaper price, support charity, and support our channel all at the same time. All you need to do is click the link down in the description below to check it out. If you're not interested, that's totally fine. Fine, but hey, it's there, it helps charity, and it helps us while also saving you money. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Now, the first and foremost thing you should know is that there are two to three primary ways that people power level in Icarus. You could, of course, go ahead and play the game normally and just go through all the missions and level that way, which is completely fine and completely viable. However, there are the more optimal ways, some of which could be considered more fun than others. The first way we're going to talk about is through open world. The way this works is you're going to go ahead and get on a character that you already have leveled up. If you don't already have a high level character, do not worry as you do not need one. This is just optional to make things go a little bit quicker if you have one available to you. What you'll do is if you have a high level character, you'll create a medium difficulty or harder if you want to open world mode. Then upon getting into that open world mode with your higher level character, you'll want to go ahead and build up some foundations. You're going to want to get yourself a nice little base, maybe some food cooked, maybe make some good weapons, I always recommend just grinding out the hunting rifle because it will save you a lot of time when leveling on your alt character. Again, if you don't have a high level character, you can still do all this. You just won't have the high end tech stuff. So you just will skip that part and build yourself a simple base with some food, plenty of arrows, maybe a good like iron knife if you have that available, but you can still do all of this with just stone tools if that's something you want to do. The only thing you're going to have to unlock if you don't have a high level character already is going to be the short range radio. This will require some iron ingots, so make sure that you're able to craft those as well, which is very easy to do. I think you can craft this thing at like level 15, so it's very easy to do early on. Once you make that short range radio, you're gonna go ahead and place it outside. Now, I do recommend that you craft multiple short range radios, primarily because it allows you to select doing the same mission multiple times and gives you some more mission variety. This way, if you find a mission that you like doing that gives a lot of XP and is easy to do, all you have to do is go over to the board after you completed it on the previous board and it will still be available or at least a similar version of it. Now, as you can imagine by my previous explanation, these short range radios will allow you to accept one of two different missions. There's a wide variety of missions you can have. I believe there's like eight different types, but the main one we're going to be looking for are the simple crazed creatures. These are the easiest and fastest ones to do, but there are some alternatives. The mining ones are still pretty good. The kill ones where we just have to hunt down some regular things aren't too bad. And there are some other ones in there that aren't too bad as well. But the ones you really want to avoid are going to be those crafting ones. The crafting ones take forever. They're not fun and they require a ton of resources. It is not worth the time for the XP you're going to get, even if it's hard difficulty. Now, the way these missions work is each difficulty from easy, medium, or hard that you select of the mission from that board, again, this is not based on the difficulty of your world, will reward you with a certain amount of XP. So for an example, if you choose an easy mission, you'll get 5,000 XP. If you choose a medium mission, you'll get 10,000 XP. And if you choose a hard mission, you'll get 16,500 XP. Now, this is a lot of experience, as well as if you're killing something, getting the experience for killing that thing or mining the ore or whatever else it is you happen to need to be doing. These missions are always intended to be somewhat close to your base, but if you don't have enough resources nearby, you might end up having to go walk a little ways. If that ever happens to you or you get stuck choosing between two missions you absolutely do not want to do, you can simply select a mission and then abort it. If you choose to abort a mission, you'll have to wait 600 seconds until you can get another one. That's not a big deal though, because we have other methods to level during that time period, which is where our second leveling method comes in. Our second leveling method is going to see you simply chopping trees. I know it's boring, it's not very fun, but at the end of the day, every tree that falls over is going to give you 300 experience points. Do keep in mind that all of this XP scales when you have food buffs that reward extra XP. 
It's not that much extra XP, but if you happen to have cooked it already, you should be using them as well. I mean, there's not a lot to say with the chopping trees part of this. You really just want to get the best axe you can with the best modifier for attack speed or fell damage on it, and then go start whacking trees. Very simplistic and easy. It will go ahead and put some weight on your actual computer, so I recommend you do this a little bit further away from your base than you normally would only to avoid you from getting any lag when you're near your base doing those missions. For context, a stone hatchet can chop a tree in five hits, which is very fast and very easy. And if you have some form of stamina regeneration via some food or some tonics, you can basically chop trees nonstop. Another thing to keep in mind is that while you're chopping those trees, you want to be on the lookout for any animals nearby. Every time you hunt an animal, you'll be rewarded with a good amount of XP, and if you're decent with your bow, you can one-shot just about anything in the lower level areas. All you need to do is see it, crouch down, and shoot for the head. If you do manage to kill a creature, the lower end creatures such as deers and rabbits and such will usually reward about 800 or less experience, it can vary a bit. However, the more hostile creatures such as wolves for an example will tend to award 1300 all the way up to sometimes like 2,000, and if you're killing something like an elephant it can kind of get crazy, but the idea here is that hostile creatures reward more experience, so you always want to hunt those ones if you ever get the chance to see them, even if it's while you're doing a mission as it only takes a moment or two. Now, if neither of those two options for one reason or another do not sound appealing to you and you want another way to level, we do have what is arguably the fastest way to level in the game. Now, Keep in mind, this way is probably one of, if not the most boring way, other than just chopping trees all day, which you probably wouldn't be doing because you'd be doing missions anyways. If you want to do this method, what you're going to do is go to the sticks map and choose the very first mission. Upon getting there, you're going to go ahead and head over to this location where you'll find a whole bunch of Komodo dragons. If you're careful, you can actually use a knife and just keep hitting these things while walking backwards, but if they do bite you, they can cause a pretty nasty debuff. Now, what you'll want to do is you'll want to sit in the area, and if you have a bow, that's even better, but again, you can do this with a knife, and you'll want to just kill as many Komodo dragons as fast as you possibly can. You can do this as a level 1 character or a level 49 or 50 character, whatever it is you prefer. The idea here is that each one of these are going to be rewarding you with a thousand to three thousand experience depending on the level of the Komodo dragon and you can basically kill them non-stop because they infinitely respawn. Now keep in mind this method may not still be viable depending on when you're watching this video. It depends if the devs have actually taken the time to fix this yet or if they've decided that they're just going to leave it in the game. Either way, it's a great way to level, but it does get very tedious very, very quickly. One way to make this go by faster is to simply bring a friend or two with you. Since these infinitely respawn, you won't have to fight over kills and you'll be getting shared experience while also just getting experience for killing them yourself, which makes leveling absolutely insane. At the end of the day, there are lots of other ways that you can level in Icarus, but these are some of my favorite ways and some of the most efficient ways that we've personally found to level. Of course, like I said before, you can always just do the regular missions and you will hit max level eventually. These are just faster ways to get there or easier ways to unlock technology if say you're in one mission and can't craft something that you need so you can go get the XP somewhere else and then come back. Either way, I want to give a big shout out to all of our Platinum and Above channel members, which include Caustic FPV, Jonathan S, and Jim Phillips. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.